The agency relationship is made up of a principal that interacts with third parties through an agent with authority to act on behalf of the principal. Agency relationships can be formed in a few different ways. In many cases, agency is formed by a written contract that specifies the duties and authority of the agent, but that's not the only way an agency can be established. Agency relationships can even be created if the principal didn't grant someone authority or even intend to employ an agent. In these situations, it's the actions of the de facto agent that forms the relationship with the principal. Effective agency can be formed when someone accepts and approves of the agency actions of another person, when someone acts on the reasonable belief that another person is an agent, even though they're not, or when someone acts like an agent in order to protect another person. It's important to note that no one can be forced against their will to be another person's agent. The nature of the agency relationship can be defined by the scope of the authority that the agent has been granted. There are also different levels of agency. The broadest authority is held by what is known as a universal agent. Then a general agent has a moderate amount of authority, but is limited to one area or limited by time. And finally, a special agent has the most limited authority. This kind of agent only has authority relating to one project or series of projects over a specific amount of time. The authority granted to an agent in an agency relationship can have some major ramifications too. Authority can be actual, where it is known to exist by both the principal and agent, or the authority can be apparent. Apparent authority occurs when a third party works with another person they think is an agent. However, the agent isn't actually an agent and doesn't actually have authority. The arrangement of agency has a lengthy history. As such, some of the most important cases in the establishment of agency law are historic ones, though American laws are different from British laws because America operates in the common law tradition of England, some of the pivotal cases used to establish precedent regarding agency are in fact British. The 1872 case of Ireland versus Livingston looked at the establishment of express actual authority. Here, the agent, Ireland, was commissioned to see that 500 tons of sugar were shipped to Livingston in Britain from the island of Mauritius. He specified that the amount could vary by as much as 50 tons. 500 tons was an unattainable amount of sugar at that time, so the agent performed his duty by getting as close as he could, which resulted in a delivery of only 400 tons of sugar. Upon receipt of the sugar, Livingston refused to accept the delivery. He tried to get out of the contract by claiming that the agent hadn't performed as instructed. Ireland, in turn, sued Livingston providing the written instructions from Livingston, which specified his instructions. The court determined that Livingston's instructions were ambiguous, and they set the precedent that if a principal's instructions can be interpreted more than one way, the principal cannot deny responsibility for the way in which the agent chose to interpret it. In 1893, the case of Watteau versus Fenwick addressed the issue of what is known as an undisclosed principal in an agency relationship. In the case of Watteau versus Fenwick, a supplier of cigars, Watteau, sued the owners of a business, Fenwick, for failure to pay their account at a balance of 25 pounds received by the manager. The question of agency arose because the former owner of the business, a person named Humble, had been retained as manager by the new owner. Fenwick, however, had never given Humble explicit authority to act on their behalf. In the end, the court ruled that Humble had the implied authority to act on behalf of Fenwick. In addition, the business was within his scope as an agent since the business owners had allowed him to act as an agent before this. The 1976 case of Healy Hutchinson v. Brayhead Limited dealt with the concept of actual authority. The plaintiff, Healy Hutchinson, was the chairman of the company, Perdio Electronics Limited. A shareholder of Perdio Electronics named Lord Richards was also the chairman of the defendant company, Brayhead Limited. Richards had been acting as the managing director of Brayhead for some time. It was because of this that the board of directors unquestionably knew him as chief executive with actual authority. He would often enter into business deals and later inform the board of the arrangements. One of these deals involved an arrangement in which money was lent between Brayhead and Perdio Electronics. 
Perdio Electronics, a struggling company, ended up going into liquidation. When Perdio Electronics asked for the money they had been guaranteed, the Brayhead Board of Directors objected, saying that Richards had no authority to create the arrangement between Perdio Electronics and Brayhead. The court disagreed. Not only did they find that Richards had implied authority due to the board's acceptance of his making deals first and sharing the details later, he was also found to have had actual authority. As a result, his actions were actions of an agent authorized to act. Agents are responsible for doing certain things for their principal. At the same time, the principal has responsibilities they owe to their agents. Both principals and agents are responsible for carrying out duties for third parties. These responsibilities are crucial to the functioning of any agency relationship. Agents have a core set of duties. They are obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality, accounting, and reasonable care and performance. The responsibilities of principals center around protecting and compensating agents. But normally, agency isn't a permanent arrangement. Depending on the contract that established the agency relationship, an agency relationship can be ended in a number of ways. Agency relationships usually end when the task assigned by the principal is completed. This is especially true in real estate agency relationships, but agency agreements can also have time limits. When the time limit expires, the relationship comes to an end. Beyond that, agency can be terminated by factors like law, destruction of property, death of the agent or principal, one or both parties undoing the agreement, or a breach of the agreement.